welcome to Talk Culture. I am Kid Cadet. Happy Thursday, everybody. And it's extra exciting because, oh my gosh. Okay, our theme song is so good. I can't wait to talk about all of the things. And Matt hasn't been on the show, I think, since 2021. So it's been a while. Let's welcome him back to the stream. The one and only, well, right now his name is The Mustard Man. So we'll have to unpack that. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Novetsky, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hey, guys. Oh, my God. This is so exciting. Thank you. Yeah, it's exciting for me, too. I feel like um, I just I it just feels like it's been forever, honestly. I know, because like, when when we first started doing this live stream, you were on a lot. Like, yeah. And then the world ever so slightly started progressing back to normalcy. Yeah. And you are back to being a busy, 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 busy man. So thank you yeah. so much. For, I, yeah. I appreciate it. No, thank you. This is like. This is one of my favorite things to do, honestly. So I'm just, I'm stoked to be doing it. It feels well, good. Thank you. Yay. I, I appreciate that. So big question right off the top. First thing I wanted to ask, The Last of Us. Oh my God. Mm. Tell me everything. What are your thoughts? Uh, okay. So I I have been like trying to recruit people as though there aren't enough people because HBO really needs my help, you know, That's but right. I'm like, Thank I'm you. I'm out there recruiting people every day. I'm like, have you seen this? And then, you know, of course, sometimes I get like the people that haven't seen it or don't know anything about it or haven't played the game, like give me the whole like, I'm not into the apocalypse thing or I'm not into zombies or whatever. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not that's not what's going on here. Like, you got to give it a chance. You got to check this out. It's it's not only was it my favorite game ever, like of all time, I've played I've played it probably eight times. The first one, maybe. And then or seven times. And then I played the second one. I played it all the way through twice. So I love the game. It's a big deal to me. High expectations, of course, but I was so excited. The, like some of the casting choices, I was like, ooh, okay. Like, I, yeah, let's see. You know, I, I don't know, but let's see how it goes. But four episodes in, like, I don't even care that football, that my team's not even playing on Sundays now. Sorry about Just that. Just yeah. because every Sunday night I have something to look forward to, like, I love the show so much. I think they are just absolutely crushing it. I think they're doing so well. Yeah. I love it. Pedro is just sensational. Everyone is so wonderful. Now, I'm I'm not a video gamer. I guess I can go on record and say that. Uh, so I wasn't familiar with the video games. So what, what would you say, like, are the biggest differences from playing it through versus watching it? Yeah, it's, I mean, so the characters, like, one thing that I really love is they've recreated some of the scenes from the game verbatim in such a cool way, which I'm a big fan of because some of those scenes to me are just so iconic. Like like when I go back and play the game, it's like watching a movie again, you know? It's like the, the story is just incredible. And so those scenes are so important. And I love that like, it's not even just like the, the, the I know it's way too much about the show, I'm sorry. It's no, not even it. just like the episodes that Neil Druckmann, who is the writer and director of the game, He's directing some of the episodes. It's not even just the episodes he's doing. It's all of the directors. Like they're taking these scenes right out of the game and redoing them perfectly. Like the dialogue's perfect. The setting's perfect. Everything. Um, man, I just, I can't even like, I don't know. Like I can't, I can't even really like put my finger on like what it is that, that like, I guess there are things that like I was worried about. As far as the show goes, like, are they going to be able to do this? Are they going to be able to do that? What's blown my mind is, like, not only are they reproducing the game, but they're diving so much more in depth. So right. I would say, the, so, like, your question, I would say the biggest difference so far is just how in depth they're going with the specific characters and their backstories. There's, like, the third episode is all about uh, Nick Offerman's character and, um, um, Mark oh, my God. The guy who plays, uh, oh, Murray Bartlett. Murray Bartlett. Oh, yeah. like my new favorite actor, by the way. The White Ditto. Lotus. So good. So yes. good. So their their whole story is kind of touched on in the game, but but like you can't really, you have to play a game. You can't just watch it, you know? So there are so many cutscenes you can do. So those characters are in the game, but they don't go nearly as in depth. And then in the show, like there's this whole episode that could be its own movie, essentially. And it's like, I cried. I, just, <laughs> I cried watching it. Like it was I did too. I, I wasn't oh. prepared because you know, you, you go into the show, you're like, okay, apocalypse, fungus people, and then they give you this the most beautiful love story that's ever existed in an hour. 
Yeah. And it was unfair for them to do that to us. I was not emotionally. Uh, it's. I, I thought about it too. I'm like, how did they go from, I guess one of the things that I really love about the show is it's horror, it's drama, it's romance, it's comedy, it's everything in between. And it, and they do all of it very well. Yeah. You know, is where the, the game and tone is horror. Okay. Like, don't get me wrong. There's drama, but it is a horror game through and through. I mean, it's freaky, mm. you know? And like this to me is like, man, you could, each one of these episodes kind of is a chapter is like, you could almost put it in a different genre. Sure. You know, which is, which is really hard to do, but like hats off to those guys, man. No, I think it's yeah. the most expensive show ever made in Canada. If I, I, be I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it. Oh man. Yeah. It's, it, it's so good. So what are you currently playing? Like musically? Uh, video game wise. Oh, video game wise. Yeah. What am I playing? So, <laughs> oh man. So I, I have, I have this really bad habit of getting games when they come out and if they don't draw me in right away, I just kind of move on. So I have a huge game collection, okay. but you know, but I think people just assume like, oh, you must have all this time on your hands. And like, you, you play a lot of games. I'm like, no, I just buy a lot of games and don't really follow through on any of them. So I just amass this like, but there is a game that I played and then I got, a, I just got a PS5. And so I started diving back into it and mm -hmm. it's called, it's called Ghosts of Tsushima. Oh. Ghosts of Tsushima, I think is what it's called. And it's like, again, incredible story. The set, like the graphics are unreal. It's, and it's not, I've never played like a samurai game before. That's not really something that was on my radar before. And the game's beautiful. I'm really like, I'm really digging it. Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. Very, very cool. good. Awesome. Yes. Steven just said Ghost is beautiful. Steven, I agree with you. Okay. It awesome. Is. Very cool. Well, okay. Just to pivot <laughs> uh, a little bit, I saw that you guys had posted that the first Icarus Bell album is potentially upon us very shortly. Very shortly. I have two vocals left to do okay. <laughs> and i was supposed to do it during christmas break and then some stuff came up but it's like it's on the docket and it's almost wrapped up so the plan is i guess i can say i should have checked with alan probably before i just spilled the beans on this but i the plan is to have it out definitely this year probably the first part of this year and then while i'm home during the summer we are going to actively put together a string of shows mid to late summer Awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so exciting. I'm, yeah. It's just, you know, just, it's like you go from a pandemic to where you have nothing but time on your hands to like, I have no time <laughs> whatsoever, you know? So yeah, I understand. But, it's but yeah. uh, it, it's so funny because like literally every single guest that we have on for one, like, I don't know how familiar people are with like StreamYard as a platform, which is what we use to do this. And so like during the intro video, we can kind of see everybody, you know, watching the intro and everyone's yeah. always rocking out to the song. Oh, and nice. It's so good. That's and then awesome. people tell us all the time how much they love it. And I mean, it's such a good song. So what, what can you tell us about the album? Well, first of all, thank you for that. That really means a lot, no, honestly. I mean, thank that's, you. you know, cause the whole, the whole thing with the album is like, we're, we, we're really doing it for just is a passion project and really just for us, but we're like, you know, if people like it, they like it, but it really is such validation when you hear that people that you respect and you really value their opinion, you know, they come back and say that they like something that you wrote or that you recorded like that, that means a lot. Um, so, but as far as the album goes, um, I would say, I think it's good. Well, we're going to do vinyl, first of all. Cool. Love we that. definitely want to have a big visual component to it, which we've been talking about. And I think that we're going to like, I love the idea of like back in the day when you bought an album and you looked at the artwork and you, you sorted through it. And then like, there might be some Easter eggs in there. There might be some little like just tidbits, like a lot of information for you to soak in. And it wasn't just, here's a single, here's a song. It's instant. I hear it. Okay. I'm moving on to the next thing. It has to be a bit of an experience. So I think that we're, we've been talking about really making sure that, we put package it correctly and make it very um, Icarus Bell-ish in that sense, you know, because Brad, who does our artwork, has a theme going on with everything. Love the art. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that the, I think the thing with this whole album is like we're really kind of Alan and I kind of got to our our roots in a, in a cool way. Like we really kind of dug back into like the STP and the Alice in Chains and a lot of those bands that we grew up and you know grew up on and listened to and love. So I think that there's a lot of that 
there's going to be a lot of that, like it's going to be reminiscent of those bands and those nineties bands in a lot of ways. And then already thinking about that sort of being like, it's one big piece that all works together thinking about the next album and what we're going to do with that and where we're going to go stylistically. And I don't want to just do the same thing again. So I would, I would just say, if you don't love, well, for, if you don't love rock, then we're not friends. But if you, <laughs> if, if that's not your cup of tea, um, that's cool. That's totally cool. But maybe stick around and see what we come up with after this. Cause it's definitely going to be a different direction. Very cool. Sure. Uh, Kate, create said that they just got an Icarus bell tattoo a few days ago. No <laughs> way. Oh my gosh. That's oh, a, that's, that's wow. That's a fan. Kate, yeah. that's amazing. I love you. She's the sweetest. Oh my God. Yeah, that's, that's pretty epic. I wonder, I wonder if it's a logo, a lyric. What is it, Kate? We need to know. Tell us everything about the tattoo. Uh, can you tell us the name of the album or is that not an, Ooh, I, I actually, actually that hasn't been decided yet. That's a great question. Funny. You know, so, I, I mean, I like, um, I don't, I love self-titled albums, but I don't like when the first album is self-titled. So I feel like if we're going to, like, if we're going to pick one of the song titles, it needs to be something that really kind of encompasses what the whole album's about, you know? So like right now, like Bones might be my vote, okay. you know? Um, but we'll see. Yeah. We'll see soon, apparently. Soon. Soon. Yeah. <laughs> soonish. We'll, we'll take soonish. Yeah. We'll take 2023. Look, we'll we'll take what yeah. we can get. Um, Definitely so, this year. Okay, so bunny tattoo on the back of their hand. Good. That is commitment. That is not I love it. an easy place to get tattooed. So <laughs> that's actually and that's actually a really that's a cool tattoo. That's yeah. all like that's awesome. Yeah. Heck yeah. No, I'm Maybe. thinking about getting one. As you should. As you should. Uh, but you'd only be copying Kate. So. Uh, okay, so Sorry, Kate. I to say, Matt, I got to see you guys uh, play Blue October, mm -hmm. gosh, I guess beginning of December at the Parker mm -hmm. in Fort Lauderdale, which is just one of my favorite venues of all time. That theater is stunning and so beautiful. So cool. Yeah, yeah. Just, so gorgeous. But before that, you guys were on, uh, on tour with the Goo Goo Dolls, which yes. is just epically incredible and amazing. So what has it been like being back on the road, getting to see people again, taking the sights in the cities? What, what has it been like for you? Man, it's like, it, you know, it's like having something that you just not only that you love, but something that's just become second nature to you, just sort of ripped away from you is really strange, you know? So like, while some really good things came out of the whole pandemic times, like I really, I just realized, and I, it, it sound it might sound a little corny or whatever, but like I really realized like how spiritual playing music on stage is for me. It's not a, it's not a job. It's not a gig. It's right. not like, it is spiritual. It is like, it's my anchor. It's my, it really is my purpose. You know, it's like the thing that I have loved since the very first time I did it, you know? And so not being able to do it was um, challenging, but being able to do it again and then be able to go back out with my, with my family, you know, like I can't even put into words how much that means. And I think that like, we all kind of came back with this whole sort of like newfound, not respect, but this just new sense of like gratitude, mm -hmm. you know? So like, so now I think that we all try to like really enjoy the day a lot more than maybe we did in 2019 or 2018. You know, it's like you get up and you're like, okay, man, this is awesome. I'm playing music and people are showing up and we can actually communicate and do and like hang out and do this again. And you never know when, when something could happen again, that could just take it away. So like being able to go out there and play again and be like, and, and getting to reconnect with people is really awesome. Like yeah. I, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. And I'm just like, if I had any doubts in my mind that it was what I was meant to do, like ever at any point, which I don't think I did, but if I did, that's <laughs> definitely erased. Like I, this is definitely what I, I'm supposed <sighs> to be doing. I know? agree, Matt. I, it's, yeah. it's so wonderful seeing you guys up there. It, it did feel like new in a sense. And I have to say, cause I've, you know, I've seen you guys a handful of times and this was probably my favorite show. And I have to say one of my favorite parts of like this show was the lights were just like so encompassing. Whoever did the lighting design, oh my gosh, MVP. Just it was so gorgeous. that's that's actually my boy Brad. Uh Brad 
if you want to go check him out, go on Instagram. He goes by Scandal Bar Mustache. Okay, great name. Brad, uh, mm-hmm. he's worked for a lot of big bands. Um, and I'm actually going to tell a little Brad story real quick. But go Brad ahead. is not only a phenomenal artist and uh, an LD lighting director, he's also one of the best humans I know. Like, I love the guy. And one of the things that I really love about Brad is I love everybody on the bus, but there aren't a lot of nerds on the bus. Mm-hmm. I'm a nerd. Brad's a nerd. So, like, when it comes to, like, The Last of Us, like, the, like every episode, we text each other. Like, holy, like, did you see, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Like, he's the guy, like, I can text and, like, nerd out with, you know? So, like, I love him on that level so much. But um, Brad actually said, you know, he, he kind of going back to what I was saying a minute ago, there was a moment on tour and it was like right after a show and I don't remember where we were or anything, but I just remember like we were talking and, and he just kind of looked around and he was like, you know, I've worked with a lot of bands, but it's never felt like this, you know? Mm. Man. <laughs> so how cool is that? You know? So just to be able to hear that from somebody who not only is a pro at what they do, but somebody who has worked with a bunch of huge bands and, 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 ha- and is very experienced in his field. It's not like it was his first tour, you know, if it was his first tour, it's like, yeah, of course it's never felt like this. But <laughs> if you, when you've done it and you've been around a lot of other acts and not to take anything away from any other acts, but sometimes the business kind of takes over things, you know? And I think that with us, we, that's not really how blue October rolls, you know, like when, when you're on the bus with us, like you better, <laughs> you better buckle up and you got to have a sense of humor and you got to roll with it. And if you don't, you ain't going to last long. When you're on the sure. bus with us, you better buckle up. There you, you go. Better buckle up. That. That's it. Yeah. And, and I, I think one of the things that I love about you guys and, and the blue family is you guys appreciate and you always shout out and, and, make it known how much you guys appreciate every single member on your team. You know, it's like, I don't know how many bands I know that I know the guitar tech or the drum tech or people, you know, running the sound and running the lights. I mean, I feel like you guys, especially, and, and a lot of these people are the unsung heroes without them. Not everything comes together as flawlessly. Look, my job, I'm going to, I'm going to admit something. I don't think I've ever admitted this publicly. My job is easy. It's very easy. It may seem hard. It's not. It's easy. I have four strings and I, and I do an hour and a half. And, and that's my, that's my day pretty much. Like, yeah, we sound check and all this, but like I get to just get on stage and play music. Like, give me a break, man. It's so much fun. It's so easy. Those guys, they have hard jobs. Like those are hard jobs. They work from the minute we get there and load in until the minute everything is out of there. You know, and those are long days. It's sometimes it's grueling. Like the work is just grueling. There's local crew to help with things, but sometimes, I mean, you're pushing cases and cases of gear up flights of stairs and like, there's just so much to it. And like, and every venue is different and every day is different, of course. But like, I just have so much respect for our crew in particular and the way that they all work together and just how, and, and not only the crew that we have now, but the, like people that we've worked with in the past, you know, I mean, some of my best friends actually are people that have worked with us before, you know? So like, I just, uh, yeah, it's not for us. It's definitely not the whole, like the band is here and the crew is here. And there's this clear division. I mean, I've been around bands that like, like the guitar player doesn't even know the tech's name, Oh, mm. you know, mm. or I should say the singer guitar player doesn't know. Cause it's always the lead singer, right? But they don't know the, uh, <laughs> they don't know their own guitar tech's name. You know, it's like, Oh, oof. That's yeah, gotta be oof. a fun tour to be on. I know. Oof. Yeah. No, no, nah, they can't be on the bus. No. Uh, so I, I also wanted to mention that spinning the truth around part two, right. We're expected to see that soon. Uh, yeah. what have been some of the biggest maybe perks, but also challenges of doing like multiple albums back to back to back. I love it. And I, I love it. Like, in fact, I just got, I was down there today. I was down up down today and I was actually, I had my day planned out cause I have my kids and, and, um, and while they're at school, I'm like, okay, um, I'm going to rehearse today. I got a tour coming up. I'm going to rehearse. I'm going to kind of go through my stuff. I got all my stuff set up and Justin FaceTimes me right as I'm about to start. And he's in the studio. He's like, you remember that part the other day that you brought up and it kind of needed a little something. And I'm like, you need me there. Don't you? (laughs) He's like, could you come down? So I'm like, yep. So I pack up and head down there and like, 
but the but the thing about this is like when you have somebody who just works as a writer constantly and never stops writing and then also has a studio like why would you not just want to churn out as much material as possible of course it's got to be good you know it has to be good like it can't just be three albums of filler you know but i think that like when somebody like justin who never really puts the pen down so to speak it's such a good thing to like okay well let, like let's kind of challenge ourselves by just making sure that all 30 songs instead of just 10 songs are up to par you know so to me like i love it because we're it keeps us busy it keeps us creative there's like in, there's no more like album cycle like there used to be i mean it used to be like three years or whatever between an album or two years or whatever it was and then you'd go and make an album for a month and then you'd put it out and those days are gone you know yeah i, li I like this way better yeah and trust me we'll we'll take all the music we can get keep it coming i mean as long as you guys are are okay doing back to back to back because i mean is there like any sense of of burnout matt like no do you ever not oh, at that's all amazing no and i think a big part of that is um and i've re i've really like I, I really admire um justin and, and eric i gotta give a shout out to eric as well uh eric holtz who uh co-produces and engineers all of our stuff um they are really good about not doing the same stuff over and over and over again and i think that when you hear about bands burning out yeah, you can burn out if, if you're doing 10, 12 hour days every day. I mean, I've, I've gotten burnt out at the end of making a record, you know, just because it was just so like so much work in such a short amount of time or whatever. But there's no burnout with us creatively. And it's really because we never do the same thing twice. We don't make the same song over and over again. I mean, there's some bands like, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, this is their 10th album. And they it's like the same song. <laughs> over and over and over again we don't do that you know like and and so we will basically challenge ourselves to like go in the studio and go nope we've done that before what are you going to do different this time and sometimes that's nerve-wracking it's like oh what am i going to do different this time so i have some tricks up my sleeve on on the last record and this record oh um as a bass player i have some tricks up my sleeve but like okay. i think it's just forces us all as musicians to get super creative that's exciting. I can't, I can't wait. And I feel like you guys have gotten to the point where you have so many hits and so many sensational songs that I think next, next tour, you guys need to play for at least four to five to six to seven hours so we can hear them all. I it's love like, that. it's, it's so, it's so amazing. It's like, you'll go to, to one of your shows and song after song, after song, after song is like, this is my favorite song. No, but this one is. And it's like, yeah, I, I you know, if you ask me like any other band, what's your favorite song? I could easily pick one. But with Blue October, they're all my favorites for so many different reasons. It's like. That's the ultimate compliment. Honestly, yeah. it really is like that. That's amazing. I love that. It's. Uh, I just love hearing that so much. And I hear that a lot, actually, you know, which means a lot to me. So, so. Um, I don't know, man. I saw a Russian concert on okay. one of the tours and they played for like three and a half hours and i'm like how do these guys do this but then the thing is is there weren't even any like rare b-side songs in that set list i was like when you get to that point you have to play that long like you have to play really long sets because you can't just take all the songs that everybody wants to hear out of there you know right. so it's getting harder to make the set list i'll tell you that it is I mean, yeah, that's what you get for having so many yeah. wonderful songs. Uh, two things. Maddie Riley is in the comments. We love you, Maddie. You're amazing. I was just thinking about you today. I was at Home Depot and your your one of your songs came on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> love you, Matt. Uh, Jude wants to know, because I know this was something we had talked about over the past couple of years, uh, but you got to play Red Rocks. So what was it like getting to play Red Rocks? Uh, it was a total dream come true, you know, like, uh, because before then it was always, you know, we do meet and greets and, and, and when we do meet and greets, we do Q and A sessions. When we do Q and A's, almost every show, somebody says, what's, what venue would you love to play that you've never played or what's your favorite venue? So when people would always ask what's venue you've never, it are unanimously, the answer was always Red Rocks, Red Rocks. Well, I've never done Red Rocks. I'd want to play and getting to actually do it was such a bucket list item, you know, did like, it. And, it, and it did not uh, disappoint at all. Like the experience itself was incredible. Everybody there was so friendly and cool and the food was amazing and the show was incredible. And like, 
it was awesome. Everything about it. That's oh, that is so yeah. cool. What what did it sound like? Like what were the acoustics like there? Did it amazing feel different? Yeah. No, you know. So the, the thing that I wasn't expecting, and I and I know a lot of people that um, have played Red Rocks, and they didn't warn me about this. Is the sound is great, but what's really weird is the way the seating is. It's like straight up, and it's ten thousand people. So at a normal show it's kind of a sea of people. So you can kind of look out and everybody sort of blends together. Red Rocks is very like, whoa, deer in headlights because you get up on stage and then you look out and you can see every single face of all 10,000 people because of the way the seating is. It's, it's, I mean, it's like, you know, it's just 10,000 people just straight up in the air and you're like, whoa, I can really see every single person. This is like, it's a good thing I don't get stage oh, right. Oh my gosh. I know. Even like thinking about it just made me like a little bit nervous. Uh, yeah. But I have to get there at some point. I just watched a special. I think it was Bill Burr that shot oh, it. Oh, I love Bill Burr. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was pretty incredible. Oh my gosh. That's so fun. I'm so glad that you guys had yeah. the opportunity and I'm sure you're going to be back a gazillion and one more time. So. Oh, I hope so. It may, even just one more time. I, I, I could die happy. That's great. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, okay, so I want to, of course, talk about Orb Studios. So, what what can you uh, update us on? Any like bands or artists that we should be on the lookout for? Tell us. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> so really. there's a lot of good stuff. So I I work pretty closely uh, with some artists, and I'll name off some. So and I'll and I'm I'm going to do this by genre, so I'm not wasting your time. If you <laughs> if you like country, check out this girl. Her name is Whitney Miller. Um, she's phenomenal. She just moved to Nashville, but, but I really kind of early on really kind of like really pepped her up as far as like, look, like you're awesome. You should be doing this. You need to just go for it. And so we've become really good friends. We're actually going to collaborate on a song, uh, coming up soon. Very cool. Um, but I've done a lot of work with her and I really just, I just love her. I really believe in her. Um, Grace Sorensen, R and B like smooth R and B. This girl's awesome. She does all of her own choreography. She's a dancer. She's a singer. She's phenomenal. Um, and then I actually am, am working with the band now uh, called Nolo. And it's pretty awesome, like just kind of some of the parallels with this band and us, but they all met in recovery. Okay. They didn't know each other before that. And they're in a band together now. And it's four guys and they're like, their music is really, really awesome like they almost have a little bit of taking back sunday in in their music and then they've got like i don't know like mute math and stuff like that but but they're they're lyrically their songs are pretty heavy you know which is you would expect in a situation like that but i'm really excited about what we're going to do with this band I'm, I'm developing them uh uh kelsey and i are actually developing together i really like believe in these guys and i'm really excited to see what's going to happen with them but it's just such a unique story you know like i, I think they i i think they can definitely like touch some people for sure that's i'm awesome. excited about it yeah that's amazing very cool yeah so you got you got a lot going on <laughs> and, and i got one more sorry oh, and wow. i'm actually i'm actually oh, working yeah. with a, a hyper pop duo called hyper color and it's a, a a guy girl duo and they're awesome they are so good and they're like, they would be pissed if they heard me say this, but they're just kids. They're so young. They're like just babies. And it's amazing because um, they work so well together. They're both so sweet and just so creative, but they do all of their own stuff. And like, I don't even have to produce anything. Like they handle everything themselves. They're totally self-sufficient, but I really, I'm really excited about what's going to happen with them too. I can, I think they're going to be in a, in a, like a, Volkswagen commercial or something before before you know it. I love that. <laughs> That's my yeah. prediction. I love it. Uh, okay, so before I go to my next question, there's a couple in the comments. Um, Kim wants to know how do you and Alski come up with video ideas. So. Um, that's something we need to dive back into actually, because we have a lot of ideas cooking right now. We had this whole elaborate idea for Bottle Rocket. And it was right as everything started shutting down and getting weird and like, and it just, we just put it on the back burner and then we were like, we got to put the song out. We'll probably still do the video at some point, but so I can't give away the story, but, um, bones actually, I wrote the treatment for bones for the animated video. Um, and basically just put this kind of whole storyboard together, the characters and everything. 
uh, and then I showed it to Alan and he was like, dude, I love this. And he had some, some really good input. He has re like really, really good feedback. And so we kind of like got it all together from there. And then Alan is really, really good friends with Jared May, a good friend. He used, they used to be in a band together and Jared, uh, does animation. And so he reached out to Jared and Jared was like, I'm going to bring this idea to life. And like, I mean, I like every once in a while, I'll just watch it, you know? And I'm like, it's been a while. I'm going to watch this. Holy crap. This is so good. Like, I just absolutely love this. Like, I love what he did with it. I love how he brought it to life. So it's really kind of like, I think that it's important that the videos aren't just, there's so many videos now. There's so much content because everybody's making videos because it's so cheap and easy to do. You can do it with your phone that like, you kind of have to sift through all the crap, you know? Mm -hmm. So to me, if we are going to make videos, I think Alan, I both feel like it's really important that it tells a story you know, and that the video, if it's not going to be a live thing, like aces was, was, you know, yeah, there's the cards, you know, but beyond that, it was really just kind of our coming out party. It was like, Hey, here's, here's us. Here's what we look like together. Um, bones was definitely like a step in the direction that we want to go, which is like, Hey, let's actually like take the lyrics and, and do something super creative with it and actually put it, you know, make a story out of it. Not just like, Hey, look how cool we look, <laughs> you know? Sure we're the cool band. Like, we don't care about any of that. We're trying to tell a story, you know? Yeah. Fair. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I guess kind of a follow up, uh, who would be in the band when Icarus Bell does go on tour? You mean like additional members? I I'm assuming that's the question. Yeah. So we're, we're really lucky in the sense that like one, we had a bunch of cameos. Oh, that's the other thing. And you asked me about like what to expect from the album, right? We have a bunch of cameos. And we're not done yet. So we're going to have a bunch of more. So it's going to be one of those things where it's like when you read the back of the album and you just look at the track listing and then you look at everybody that was involved, it's kind of like, whoa, that's like, that's pretty cool. You know, like just having all these different people from different bands, and different backgrounds. Um, so that makes it hard though, because when you have like Bumblefoot shredding a solo on a seven string fretless guitar, you know, it's like, okay, well, who's going to do that? You know? Um, and then also guest vocals, we get Paco on a lot of stuff and that guy just, I can't sing what he can sing. You know, like I can't even come close to him in his talent. So, so what we have talked about is definitely running some tracks, but keeping it tasteful because we kind of have to, but I don't want to have five people on stage, you know, like I want to have one other person out with us, maybe two. Okay. And so we have some ideas right now. We haven't settled on anything permanently, but we do have some ideas about what we'll do there. I love the trio thing, you know? Going back to Rush, like seeing Rush live, I love yeah. seeing like drummer in the middle and one person here and one person here, you know, Blink-182, Alkaline Trio. Like I love the way, I love the V, I love the way it looks on stage. Plus stop covering up the drummer, man. I know. You know? Especially when, you, well, I mean, Neil Peart was. Yeah. So, like, gosh. You know, yeah. like, so, and, and with us, like Alan, Alan's not just a drummer, you know, Alan is like. He brings so much to this band creatively and as a writer and just his personality. And like, he's, he's not going to be just, Hey, you stand back here and we'll have three people in front of you. Like he, Let he, him needs, shine. To be, he needs to shine for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. More, more drum time shining in this year. Is what I'm going to, I'm going to make him do a solo for an hour every night. Perfect. And we'll, <laughs> we'll enjoy every nanosecond of it. So that's, I, I love that. He'll, he'll hate it, but that's cool. Too bad. Because, you know, it's for us, Alski. I'll tell uh, you something. And Kim, and I think this is, you know, a cool thing to mention as well. Uh, she said, being a Patreon member has been a really cool way to support the project. So make sure you all go check out the Patreon. Yes, yes. And thank you. Thank you, Kim. We love you. You know we love you. Um, yeah, I can't even tell you how, how important that is to us. Like, it's so nice to not be like stressing about every little detail and be able to do it right. And that's one thing that's been really nice is now that we're about to, to wrap up the album, there are so many costs associated with it. And to be able to like, Oh, you know what? We can do it right. Hey, instead of like, you know, putting something out that looks terrible and sounds terrible and a bunch of corners were cut, you know, it's like, I've gotten CDs where I'm like, is, what is it? It's a sleeve. Like, what is this? Like we, you know, we're trying not to do that. We want to actually make it presentable and look good and sound good. And so you guys allow us to do that. So thank you. Amazing. Okay. Let's see. Oh, 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 okay. 
So <laughs> I think since the last time that we've done a stream together, Stranger Things obviously has been like a monumental success. And one of the things that I've liked to ask people in the past, and this is definitely a throwback, was their Vecna song. And obviously in the show, it was Running Up That Hill from Kate Bush. So yeah. if you were in a scenario where you're being, I guess, controlled by a Vecna, what is your song that would snap you out of the upside down? Oh my God, that's like the greatest question <laughs> I've ever heard in my life. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Mine would be Paradise Circus by Massive Attack. Good song. It's, yeah. yeah, it's, it's. I love the way it builds. I love just the vibe of, of it. And I love Hope Sandoval's voice in it. Like to me, it's like, it's the perfect song honestly. And it just gets me in it. Like if I'm doing something, I stop what I'm doing and I just zone out every time that song's on. So I think that would be it for me. Did, did Massive Attack do the theme song for House? I don't know. That's Attack? a great question, man. If they did, I, I then I'm going to go watch House. So wrong. I it, <laughs> It's something that sounds like that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I hope I didn't just, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> So I made that up. Who knows? Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. This weekend, and we, we kind of touched on this earlier, and I apologize that your um your team didn't make it into the Super Bowl this year. I'm not trying oh, to put salt so in the wound. I'm, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to. But who are you rooting for? Are you rooting for anyone? Let's go Lions. Um, and commercials, are you excited for the commercials? <laughs> Here they come. Uh, I'm more excited for the commercials than the Super Bowl. I'm not going to lie. I Look, I respect Patrick Mahomes. I'm not an Eagles fan. I'm not a Cowboys fan either. So usually when I, you know, somebody says, I'm not an Eagles fan, Cowboys fans are like, oh, you must like the Cowboys. No, I do not like the Cowboys. Um, I don't know. I guess there are a couple guys, though, that I really loved that used to play for the Lions that now play for the Eagles, and that's Darius Slay is one of them. I'd love to see him win a Super Bowl just for him personally. But honestly, there's a handful of teams that I just don't care about. And I have to say the Chiefs and the Eagles both kind of fall in that category. So, like, I'm not really that excited about the Super Bowl. Last year, I was rooting for Stafford, so I was all about it, you know. But this year, eh. This year but, I, but I know who's going to be in it next year. So that's that's all that matters. I just got to wait for next year. The the Lions? Oh, yeah. Okay. and, and We'll be in the Super Bowl next year. I, I believe it. And so will the Dolphins. It's Hey, yeah. you could you could be. Really? Dolphins okay. look scary. They they had a good year this year. Yeah. Me yeah. talking about sports like I know anything about football. Um, Pumpkin did say Massive Attack did do that theme, and it's called Teardrop. Okay. Thank oh, you. yeah. I love Teardrop. That's one of my favorite songs. That's awesome. Okay. I've been redeemed. Thank you, Pumpkin Snoopy. Appreciate you. Okay. So the follow-up question here, Matt. <clears throat> Obviously, this year we have Rihanna. She is going to kill it. I love her. Obsessed. What is your ideal Super Bowl halftime show look like? Oh, wow. Um, I actually loved the Lady Gaga Super Bowl. I loved it. And I know she got a lot no of, wrong, like, though. No, she, she got some wrong. flack for it. But I feel like everybody wants to bitch every year about it. I loved when the Chili Peppers played and they didn't have their instruments plugged in. I thought that was very tongue-in-cheek funny. You know, yes, like, I was like, was that's funny. awesome. <laughs> if you're going to do the Super Bowl just embrace it, you know? Yeah. So I thought that was great. Um, but honestly, I think that my favorite Super Bowl uh, halftime show yet was Paul McCartney. And a lot of people dogged on that. Like they, that, like I read something where it was like, Oh, that was like the safest thing that the networks could have done or the NFL could have done. And I was like, did you watch the show? Hmm. It was phenomenal. Like he did all the wing songs and he did all these Beatles tunes. And it was like the medley was absolutely beautiful. So well done. Um, but as far as like a, like the, the perfect Super Bowl show for me, um, God, this is going to sound so bad and everybody in my band would give me so much crap for this, but I'm going to be honest. I think it would be awesome if Kiss played the halftime show. That's what I said. But there's a twist. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> it's their last show ever. Uh -huh. Oh, no. Ever. Because Kiss does a farewell tour every year. It's yeah. like, oh, this is it. We're done. No, no yeah. that has to be it, though. Like, their halftime Super Bowl show has to be the final show that they ever do. And I and I love Kiss. Don't get me wrong. But I think it would be... I think it'd be awesome. I think mm -hmm. it'd be the perfect way for them to go out. Okay. 
Okay, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't think I can live in a world without Kiss being like, this is the last one. Just kidding. We're st I mean, come on. Yeah. I, the, the only, like, and this is me being like, people are going to get angry, would be like the blood aspect of it. You know, they're going to be like, Gene Simmons yeah. shooting blood from his mouth or whatever. Yeah. I, I think like the other conversation we kind of had about it, Foo Fighters, I think, would play an incredible halftime show. Oh man. Yeah, that's a great that's a great idea. I love that. And I, I I miss like the old days of when MTV would have like Aerosmith but also like In Sync yeah. and Britney Spears. So I'm thinking we get Weird Al Yankovic. And yes. Slipknot and like I don't know. <laughs> Your idea is way better than my idea. I love that. I think that's awesome. I love. I think Slipknot would be phenomenal in Weird Al Yankovic. That's a great idea. Weird Al. And I, d I did think it was really cool that Run DMC was at the Grammys. I think like getting Run DMC and Aerosmith to kind of do the walk this way thing would be really cool too. You Let's, know, bring that back. Yeah, please, you if know? we can. And then Kim said, "Who would you want to see sing the national anthem?" Ooh, that's uh, <laughs> not Roseanne Barr. Um, oh no. Oh. How about? Uh, like, oh my God, it has to be somebody with like, like Tom Waits would be awesome or oh. like um, somebody with a really raspy, gnarly voice. Well, you know who's singing it this year, right? I don't know. It's uh, Chris Stapleton. Oh, that's the perfect, there you go. That's actually perfect. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Chris Stapleton, I'll go yeah, with that. Great, there you go. And your wish is granted Thank just you. like that. All right, so one more question and then we'll go into the game of what you rather. So obviously you are multi-talented, multi-faceted, you do it all. What would you say is the most like useless talent that you have that maybe you don't get to use on an everyday ba uh, basis? I'm really good at telling you what year movies came out. Yeah. Like I have this game and we play it on the bus sometimes, but I can usually get within one year of its release. Okay. Do we, do we test this? Like, is there like a genre? I mean, year? just usually comedies or you know okay comedies so yeah. let, let okay i'm gonna let's, fail let's, now just watch i'm gonna fail. no no no, no. I, I feel like i'm gonna give you like a like a volley how about the movie this isn't really a comedy or or anything what about the movie uh et oh et i'm gonna say i'm gonna say 1983 it, so yeah 82 so there you go. Okay, that was in one year. year. There you go. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to think of like a good comedy. What, what about um, what, like you know, when someone's like, name a movie, and you're like, uh, yeah, how, or, how or like sci-fi or anything. How about okay? How about the movie? Because for some reason this popped in my head. Ooh, 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 wait, wait, wait. I got a good one. How about the movie Shrek? Oh, the first Shrek. Yeah. Oh gosh. I, 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 I'm not a Shrek fan and I oh, get no. so much crap for it. Everybody I know thinks I'm terrible because I don't like Shrek. Uh, the first one, it had to be early 2000s, mm -hmm. um, 2003, maybe? Cool. 2001. Okay. 2001. Yeah. That's where I was in my head though. I swear. Yeah. 2001 for I, some I, reason I, was in my I, head. I felt like you were about, okay, one more because yeah. Steven's saying it and this is a great film. I'm Ferris one for Bueller, two. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I'm going to say 87. 86. Yeah. There you go. I, I think, I, I think you have to, you have to give credit for like, I would have given you like a two year window, but you said one. So yeah. I, I, I got to do one. Yeah. Two years. It's like, it's, eh, you know, but yeah, I'm usually, I'm usually pretty dead. I've had like, we've had some where I've been on the bus and I will hit like 10 in a row where I'm like on the, I'm on the money you know so it, it is impressive like i'm i'm not great with that but so i host a live trivia event and i've been hosting trivia events for 14 years and awesome. a question that i ask every week is i'll give two different films and i'll say which film debuted first okay do, do you want to try one do you want to do a i want to try trivia? it i want to okay, do so it I'll, I'll do let me let me look up my most recent trivia one and let's see what we got going on here okay so which debuted first Ooh, oh that, that one's too hard uh let's see which debuted first? I feel like these are all. These are okay. like hardcore. Okay. Which debuted first? Eyes Wide Shut or Jerry Maguire? Both of these are with Tom Cruise. Jerry Maguire. Yep. Show me the money. Yeah. Jerry Maguire is 1996. 
and Eyes Wide Shut was oh maybe 90 uh, 99 2000 right around there somewhere yeah was it it yeah i very good well, let's let's yeah. do one more ooh ooh okay okay, okay here's here, the next one which debuted first inception or the dark knight rises these both have joseph gordon levitt i'm going to say the dark knight rises but i don't think i ever actually saw inception honestly Oh no! Oh, yeah. Well, it was Inception, but that's okay. Ah, damn. Okay, it. no, you're you're doing great. You're killing it. All by right. The, by the way, hey, can I ask you a question? Yeah. So since you said the Dark Knight Rises, who yes. is your favorite Batman? Who? What actor has been your favorite Batman? So this is a okay. Personally, it's Michael Keaton. It's always been Michael Keaton. He awesome. is my dude. That being said, over the past couple of years, I've been fortunate enough, fortunate enough to have been. Um, Kevin, uh, now I'm not going to remember his last name, uh, Kevin Conroy adjacent. I saw him a lot at conventions. Yeah. And I think he maybe never got the notoriety that he deserved as Batman because he was, you know, the you didn't physically get to see him. Yeah. But um, what a wonderful man who left behind an incredible legacy. Yeah. Um, so he's in a separate category, but I, I think it's Michael Keaton. What's yours? I love Michael Keaton, but I actually fall in a very, very unpopular opinion with this. I think that Ben You're Affleck got the short end of the stick. You're I think he he absolutely looked the part. I think mm -hmm. he had the voice for the part. I think he would have killed it if they had not totally screwed up those movies so horribly. Yeah. Um, I feel bad for him, honestly. I thought he would have been perfect. And like, and it's not his fault. It all went to crap. You know? Yeah. Right. Well, what about Robert Pattinson? I, li I, I liked Robert Pattinson. Um, but I need to see more. I'm not sure yet. And we will. And I, we will. I love the, the Nolan trilogy is my favorite. I just, I absolutely love the, the Dark Knight series is so good. I, yeah. I have a different opinion, but it is not a welcomed opinion. So I usually keep it to myself. So yeah. we'll, we'll do just that. Um, all right. <laughs> Let's play Would You Rather, Matt, The Mustard okay. Man. <laughs> the Mustard Man. <laughs> I wish I remembered why. Uh, you've played this game before, and you've done great, and I'm sure you're going to do sensational this time around. Oh, so no pressure. Go. No, right. no, no, no. You yeah. got this, and you're going to be excited about this first one, but this one's going to be tough, so I apologize in advance. Here we go. Would you rather partner with Daryl to survive a zombie apocalypse? Oh, how could you do Joel, this to me? I know, to survive what I guess we'll call a fung fungus apocalypse. <laughs> oh, why would you do this to me? Okay, yeah. so I... I uh, while I love them both, and I and I do think Last of Us is a superior show, um, I'm going to go with Daryl. And the reason that I would go with Daryl is because it, it's been such a big part of my life for so long. Um, and I loved his character arc. I love the way he grew throughout all 10 seasons or 11 seasons. I love like just what happened to him. And I also feel like I would be safe. Like Joel's kind of a loose cannon sometimes. Daryl is going to protect me. So, so let me ask you this, out of all the members of Blue October, who do you think would be the best survivalist? Whose house are you going to, or bunker or shelter? Ooh, I would say probably Ryan. Yeah, Ryan is very, um, he knows a lot about things that most people don't. <laughs> like he, he really researches things, you know, like he's, he's that guy, like he just, he really educates himself on things. And I feel like he's like, um, it, like if, if I wouldn't be surprised at all, if he had a secret bunker underneath his house and he had a bunch of canned goods and a bunch of, you know, he was like ready. And I was going to say in a bunch of instruments that we don't even know how to pronounce, but oh, he yeah. play flawlessly, like and just, he could just entertain us until, until we're done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I yeah. think that's a great choice. Excellent choice. All right. Cool. Here's the next one. Would you rather, Ooh. Throw out the first pitch of a Detroit Tigers game or catch a touchdown pass from Jared Goff. I'm going to go with catch a pass from Jared Goff because um, I'm actually a terrible pitcher. Uh, <laughs> I, I played um, shortstop when I played baseball when I was a kid. And I'm an awful pitcher. And I know that I would just botch it and make the news for all the wrong reasons, even though it would be an honor. Um but I actually really like Jared Goff is uh, like, it has a, a special place in my heart. Like I really respect him and I really love just like him, like basically just 
if, if you're not a Lions fan, I'm sorry, this is super boring, but if you are a Lions fan, like, I love what he did. I love that everybody was like, oh, he's a bridge quarterback. Now he just gave everybody a big F you and went out there and killed it this year. I have so much respect for that guy. Catching a pass from him would be a dream. Honestly. Amazing. Great choice. And that picture, I don't know why he's giving me, like, Dave Coulier vibes. I don't know. All right. <laughs> he is. That's great. He just needs the Red Wings jersey. You there know? you go. Yep, yeah. yep. All right, here's the next one. Would you rather – okay – Lose a bet and have to rock a mullet for the tour or lose a bet and have to wear platform Crocs for an entire tour. I'm going to go with the platform Crocs um, because I could stand to be a little taller and, <laughs> uh, and I, a mullet does not look good on me. Fun fact. I lost a bet to Alan. So Alan and I went and saw the lions and the Cowboys play each other many, many years ago at Cowboy stadium. And the bet was whoever lost the game, you got to pick the number and you got to shave it in the other person's head. Oh, we lost the game, of course. So Alan got to shave Emmett Smith number 22 in the side of my hair, and that was a rough couple weeks. Yikes, people would just stare at me. <laughs> like, I would walk into a convenience store and people are like, What is going on with that guy? So, I don't think I could do the mullet thing. Okay, so, like, so we're going Crocs. I mean, they're sensible, comfortable, it's a choice. Uh, they don't, I don't know. They don't look very comfortable. <laughs> but, Fair. I guess a normal. A normal but uh, I'd wear those. Hell yeah. Okay. I'd do it. Awesome. Can't wait to see. All right. Here's the next one. Would you rather travel cross country with a playlist curated by Justin or with a playlist curated by Ryan? I'm going to go with Justin. It's no disrespect to Ryan. I love Ryan, but Ryan's tastes are extremely eclectic. They vary. And I feel like Justin... And I both suffer from the, the same ADD affliction where we like to listen to lots of different stuff. We have pretty similar sense of music. So I think that like, I wouldn't get tired of that playlist at all. As with Ryan's playlist, I would probably really enjoy it, but about a third of the way into it, I might be ready to hear something else. <laughs> Fair enough, great choice. Okay, here's the next one. Would you rather have the ability to change sizes like Ant-Man or have the ability to, I guess, Hulk up like the Hulk. Oh my God, that's hard. I know. Because uh, I've always been little. I want to be big. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just want to grow. Um, I would probably go with the Hulk. Actually, I think it'd be awesome to just be strong as hell for no reason all of a sudden. But but when I turn green, I, I feel like that's part of it. That's part of the deal. I feel like yeah, that. yeah. Let's go with that. I would, like, do, I would do the Hulk. Imagine throwing out the first pitch like as the Hulk. That would oh. be iconic. See, then I could pull off anything. Yeah, and I would definitely like. I I feel like uh, I would scare the boys away from my daughter for sure if I could do the yeah. Hulk thing. If they're pissing me off, I could do that. Yep, that's a good move. Got it. Perfect. All right, here's the next one. Would you rather have an endless supply of Verners or an endless supply of RX bars? You know me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so seen. Uh, I'm going to go with an endless supply of RX bars. And I love Verner's, don't get me wrong, but Verner's is also has a lot of sugar in it. Mm. And it's like something that you can enjoy. Like I remember when uh, a couple weeks ago I was in the studio and Chris Phillips from I'm Dynamite, his wife and his kids came down and she brought me two bottles of Verner's. And I was like, I don't drink soda at all anymore. And I drank both of them. And I was like, this is a special occasion for yeah. me. Something. I couldn't drink Verner's every single day. The sugar would get to me. Now, not that RX bars don't have sugar in them, but I, uh, as much as I'm on the go, RX bars are very handy. Like, yeah, it's it's a healthy option. And it is. Great, great yeah. choice. Lots Amazing. of dates. There you go. All right. Here's the next one. Would you rather go through an entire day wearing VR goggles or go through an entire day talking using only lines from Mortal Kombat? I'm going to go with Mortal Kombat. I think that would be a lot of fun, honestly. But the thing with the VR goggles is I have an Oculus or whatever, Meta, whatever it is, the Quest 2. It's not very comfortable. And I also had the P the PlayStation 1, and that's also not very comfortable. Yeah. I don't know if it's my head or what, but those things <laughs> after a while really start to just get to me. Yeah, they, they make me really nauseous. They make me a little nauseous as well. Yeah, they're yeah. fun. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's hard. I don't think I could do a whole day. 
Yeah, I, I feel like the Mortal Kombat one, what do you you get like Toasty? And then you get like <laughs> get over here. I, yeah. There's so many options. That's so good. So I love it. Yeah, That's Mortal great. Kombat. All right, I think we got two more. Okay, here we go. Would you rather name a base after your first celebrity crush or name a base after your favorite band's lead singer? Ooh. Ooh, that's a tough one. I would probably go with my first celebrity crush. Um, I was really into Tatum O'Neill when I was oh, a kid. Gosh. Yeah, Paper I was Moon. really yeah. yeah. Do you remember the movie Little Darlings? I, I it sounds familiar. It was Chris but... Christy McNichol and Tatum O'Neill, and I remember just being a kid and being like, I think I love both of them. Like, I think I want to marry both of them. Um, but it's really funny that this picture is what it is because here's the deal. My the, my first real true celebrity crush was Princess Leia in Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. I had a funny, funny feeling when I was at the theater with my sister and her boyfriend <laughs> watching that movie. And it was that scene. So the fact that that's actually in the, I mean, all these pictures are great. Like yeah. Kelly McGillis, you got, I mean, this is like, Ferris Bueller, you've got everybody here. Like, this is pretty perfect. I feel like this is what everybody would want, you know? Yeah. Like, but uh, Carrie Fisher, I was in love with Carrie Fisher. Mm -hmm. I was in love with Princess Leia. So I would say Leia. I would name a base Leia. In fact, I'm going to do it. Done. And then I'm the next one you name Tatum. So I actually, this one has a name. This one's called Itchy. Itchy. Yeah. Like so, and it's Itchy because uh, my buddy Matt Melly, who used to work at Orb, Oh yeah, Matt. Um, yeah. His daughter came in, and some of my bases have flat wounds, and some of them have round wound strings, and the round wound strings are rough. And she went to play it, and she said, "I don't like this. It's itchy." <laughs> so I call it itchy. This is this has been itchy for like three years. I love it. I didn't know if you were like going for a Simpsons thing, like an itchy, no. scratchy, but I like the no. name itchy. It's yeah. very good. Very it's good. Stuck. All right. Well, I can't wait to meet Leia. All right. Here is the <laughs> last one. Would you rather, and this one's this one's tough, um, produce or collab an album with Billie Eilish or with Harry Styles? Okay, here's the deal. Okay. If I went with Billie Eilish, I would make my daughter so happy. Mm -hmm. Like, I know that that would just be like the best move I could ever make as a father, pretty much. And like, I would always be the cool dad, no matter what. But I gotta go with Harry Styles. And I respect Billie Eilish, and I do like some of her songs, but... Harry Styles to me, like I, like his songs are very different to me from one to the next. I really like, I, I feel like he's very adventurous. Like again, the whole ADD thing, not really wanting to do the same thing over and over and over again. I like Harry Styles. I think he's brilliant. I like, I think he'd be really fun to hang out with, you know, like I just, I don't know, man. I think it'd be really fun to do something with him. And I think that that would just be maybe a little bit more up my alley, honestly. Cool iconic yeah yeah They're plus cool. he he likes funk like he has a lot of really funky songs and to me like as a bass player oh yeah that's what i would want to do i mean there's some cool bass parts in the billy eilish stuff but like those harry Styles songs are man those are groovy. They're funky yeah yeah i love it great choice uh you yeah. got them all right way to go <laughs> i got them all right i win as always <laughs> yes you win uh the lions being in the super bowl next year yes all right yeah it's Let's gonna happen it. now because you won the game. Uh Matt, thank you so much. This has been such a joy. There, there he is, number 20. That's yeah. Barry Sanders. He's he's a legend. Of course it is. Yeah. We love Barry. Um, I don't think we could name like a single player <laughs> on any I'm like, let's I know Tom Brady's retired. That was a big deal. Uh, again. He, he is. He's retired again. Him and Kiss, you know, they'll just well. I'll do a tour together. Yeah. Hopefully. Who who's gonna on retire first <laughs> is, is the real question here. But now I'm thinking about like Tom Brady and Kiss makeup and like the outfits and the platforms. Oh Ooh, gosh. With those crocs. With the black wear the crocs. crocs. Yeah. Done. Oh my gosh. I love it. Uh Matt, thank you so much. As always, you are such a joy. This has been so much fun. Thank uh, you. Yeah, um, man. I love this so much. I miss you and I miss all you guys. Thank you for joining us. This is awesome. I guess, uh, oh, we have the graphic of upcoming tour dates, the spring tour. There's so many of them. I can't even read them all. I'm not going to oh, pretend. Yeah. That's where we're going. Yeah, all of those places. So cool. hopefully we all get to see them at all of the said places. And, uh, oh, my God. You know, I get questions all the time from people like text or whatever. And it's like, oh, hey, so you're going to be at so-and-so. And I'm like, I don't ever know. Like, I just know what date I'm leaving. And then I get home. 
I don't know what I, where I'm going to be ever. Well, here so, they are. Here's there where it you is. can find Matt. And we look forward to seeing uh, stuff from Icarus Bell and more Blue October and everything else that uh, you gift to the world. Here we got some upcoming guests that we have coming up for like February. I think we have some for March coming up too. So we're welcoming back Clown Viz. I love him. We also have awesome. Katie Babs from Sirius XM. And we're also... <laughs> So the state's tentative, but uh, we have the guitarist from Goldfinger, Charlie. So that should be fun. Um, the Love song, Goldfinger. Yes, wow. I know. And the song Superman is perpetually stuck in my head every day, thanks to Tony. Nice. Hyde. I know, nice. right? But uh, I guess, Matt, until we meet again, the Mustard Man, it's been so fun. The, the Mustard Man. Ladies and gentlemen. I, yeah, we'll just, we'll keep it that way for a while. From now on, yeah. you shall be known henceforth as the Mustard Man. Um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Matt. And we'll see you guys real soon. Be safe, everybody. Happy Super Bowl weekend. I hope yes. everyone wins, I guess. Yes, go yeah. commercials. Thanks, see guys. you guys real soon. Bye, everybody.